How about primary stability? What do we do? What does it mean for a patient like this? 48-year-old healthy female, non-smoker, very high aesthetic demands, uh, high lip line, uh, very long, sharp uh, papillas, thin biotype, and uh, she has a horizontal fracture through a central incisal. Uh, she is uncomfortable with this, uh, is very self-conscious, very concerned that she's going to lose this tooth because it is mobile. And you can see in the cone beam, uh, we have uh, some alveolar volume. There is a little bit of buccal uh, plate. On the other hand, there's also about a millimeter or so of uh, buccal, uh, crestal bone loss on the direct facial. So once again, let's vote on this one. Do we extract and graft the socket? Do we extract and do an immediate placement with no provisional? Extract immediate placement with provisional? Or just bond the tooth, uh, bond to the adjacent teeth, and leave it alone. Stabilize. Okay, so about 50% or so immediate placement and provisional, about a third no provisional, and the rest are extract. Okay, good. Well, the attitude that we've developed over the years has been uh, uh, pretty well laid out in this publication that I, uh, these two publications uh, that I've done with uh, this group. Uh, that's Phil Fava, uh, Joe Kahn, uh, Luis Gonzaga, Harry Randell, uh, Stephen Chen, Bob Levine, and uh, Chris Evans. And we have these two publications in compendium, which may not get too much traction here, uh, but it's fairly wi widely circulated in the US. And we call it 10 Keys to Successful uh, Aesthetic Zone Implant Placement. And uh, those 10 keys uh, include Im immediate placement and contour management. And I'll show you a little bit how we do that. So the first part of this is uh, atraumatic uh, tooth uh, extraction, uh, although I will tell you that any tooth that's extracted on me is going to be traumatic, so we try to minimize the trauma. Uh, and uh, just take the tooth out without disturbing the socket as much as possible. Uh, the implants tend to be placed towards the palatal. Uh, we tend to use smaller diameter implants, so uh, no larger than approximately four millimeters. Uh, we can see just the uh, osteotomy being developed towards the palatal. We want to leave a buccal gap of a couple of two to three millimeters. Uh, that same combination of autogenous bone chips plus uh, uh, demineralized bone, bovine bone, which is uh, slowly resorbing. Uh, I like to pack the socket with a guide pin in place in order to make sure we get a good fill, and uh, uh, but not over... Uh, condense it. Implant is placed to the palatal. And then the key is we need to have good primary stability. Even though there's a lot of facial uh, graft material in contact with this implant, it still has uh, excellent primary stability. So with that, uh, we're either uh, going to uh, fabricate a provisional restoration or we're going to make a custom healing abutment. And you can think of this provisional as being a long or an aesthetic healing abutment. Uh, in her case, we were able to take her natural tooth, hollow it out, uh, convert it to a uh, provisional restoration. Uh, one of the other keys is uh, augmenting both the soft tissue and the hard tissue. In this case, it was done with a uh, palatal connective tissue graft. And you can see how she leaves uh, the office uh, looking like this. And in fact, I didn't point it out, but she had some recession uh, on number on this uh, central incisor. Now we've overcorrected that a little bit. So at one week post-op, uh, it looks something uh, like this. And at 10 weeks post-op, we've actually still maintained that overcorrection of the uh, pre-existing recession. Uh, the radiographs look completely normal. Uh, she complained a little bit because she didn't. She thought there was too much gingiva on the facial of the 
final restoration, so we went back and did a little laser uh, gingivoplasty. And if you look, you can see now how high she smiles, uh, where she shows the gingival margins of everything. And uh, again, if you look, compare the pretreatment, where we have some pre-existing recession, to the post-treatment, uh, we have a near-perfect uh, replacement and restoration. So uh, I think this sort of illustrates what's possible if we follow these 10 keys, uh, one of them being obviously uh, maintaining that primary uh, stability and knowing it in the first place. 